Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Seclair Chatterbox, the uh, show where we talk about what's on our mind, topics of the day, and our experiences. And uh, I'm Mike Sorg, the director of Web Media here at Seclair. And today we're going to talk about uh, chiropractic pain relief. Did I use that right? That is correct. I, I found I was having an issue using the word in the proper ways leading up to this because I never had to talk about it so much. Absolutely. A lot of people do. But so, it is chiropractic you know pain relief. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Please introduce yourself for everybody. My name is Don Valentine. I am a chiropractor, Palmer trained as Palmer College of Chiropractic. Um, uh, and I'm here to talk about how chiropractic can help people uh, in various pain uh, conditions find relief. Excellent. I guess the first thing, what drew you to uh, uh, th this line of, of, of remedy? I think it was a natural progression through my college years. Uh, having interest in sports medicine, I was introduced into a chiropractor's office to help myself personally, and it grew uh, my curiosity, and from there it went. And by, off to school I went. Um, it was either that or uh, physical therapy, some sort of hands-on work anyhow, and um, one thing led to another, and uh, to Palmer I went, and here I am now. Excellent, excellent. So, as I say, we're, uh, we're going to talk about pain relief a little bit here. Uh, tell us, um, you know, you, you know, you have a lot of people coming through the door here. You know, what sort of issues do you see? What, what's, what's common amongst people looking for help from you? Well, there certainly are the common presentations, the achy back, uh, neck, shoulders, um, and then there are the not so common, uh, people with, um, uh, bizarre pain, pain that they can't describe or hasn't quite been diagnosed and they're not sure what's going on. Um, we'll stick to the common things because it's easier to talk about, but you'll find that the way a chiropractor works to help people is pretty much, uh, it's very similar in the approach uh, looking from one condition to the next has a very similar template, but how you work with a person can vary um, a lot between condition to condition. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, you know, what all is involved with the process? If you were to walk in the door today, and you said that you had a pain, ache, uh, whatever, an injury. <clears throat> we begin with uh, a history. What happened? How did you get to the uh, condition you're in? Uh, what are this? You know, tell me the story of why you think you you feel the way you do. Um, that's followed by a, an examination, which is pretty traditional in the sense of uh, how much can you move? What hurts? Where does it hurt? Uh, how often does it hurt? Um, if x-rays, MRIs, or other studies are necessary, that's included to create a diagnosis. Uh, one thing that's really important in any treatment is knowing what you're treating. And having a name for what your pain is is absolutely vital to create the correct treatment path. Mm -hmm. So the examination creates the name of what we're dealing with. And then the treatment plan is obviously designed to reduce the symptoms, but in the chiropractic sense, you will always hear we're looking for the root of the problem, which sometimes is not necessarily the symptom that you came in with. For example, um, sciatica. You may say your foot is numb, your foot hurts, or your leg hurts. But in reality, the pain, the issue is not in the leg. It could be within the low back. So you work within the low back to help resolve the symptoms elsewhere. And uh, there are many other examples of that, but that's uh, that's one presentation example. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and then people, uh, you know, my interpretation of, uh, uh, of this method is uh, a lot of massages, a lot of uh, is back cracking in a part of that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's the that's the way it's perceived. Right. OK. OK. <clears throat> you go to the chiropractor to get your back cracked. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I like to call it a becky-atomy. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, however, yeah, I hear it all. Uh, the long and the short of it is hands-on work with the body. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it means touching the, the body by working with muscles, tendons, ligaments, and the skeletal structure, which means you're actually pushing on the, the bones within the body. And sometimes, yes, you do hear the cracking. 
the crack sound is not a necessary component to feeling better. However, traditionally, carp, that's what we're known for. You, you, you know, throughout all the ages that we've been around, yeah, you, you hear sound, but it's not a prerequisite to feel better. That's mm-hmm. not the therapy. The sound isn't the therapy. It's finding the anatomy that is not working and getting it to work that helps resolve the problem that you came in with. And that is indeed the art of the profession is finding what are those connections, um, regardless of your presentation. Is there something that is out of order within the body that can be uh, moved, manipulated, placed uh, that can positively affect your condition? And indeed, so on the table, if cracking sounds are heard, then so be it. That's part of the process. But if somebody is really, really not in the mood to hear that out of their own body, there are different techniques for that. Good. So are there a lot of, uh, uh, you know, we've talked in the past on here about uh, Reiki, yoga, some other methods that are here at Seclair and a lot of the misconceptions going into it. Uh, Sure. What are are a lot of things you hear and and what do you have as kind of an answer to some of those? Well, let's start with what chiropractic is mm-hmm. in, in, in a nutshell. Um, and I believe we've heard in the past, uh, in discussing Reiki, um, the comment, the body can heal itself. And that's a vitalistic point of view of healing. When you think about how we look at ourselves from a traditional medical model, we're symptom oriented. We uh, identify the pain and we go, ouch, that hurts. Um, what's wrong and what can I do to manage that symptom? A vitalistic point of view looks at the body as, well, why isn't it repairing itself? Why am I continuing to hurt? Uh, yes, this particular part may hurt, but what what's going on behind the scenes somewhere else in the whole system that's causing this to hurt day in and day out over a long period of time. It's a change in perspective on how chiropractors look at the healing process compared to traditional medicine. Given that, some of the misconceptions are, well, I guess some of the ones are, once you go to the chiropractor, you always have to go. And that's not true at all. A treatment plan should have a start and an end with a goal in mind. And there are people who choose to do maintenance care uh, at whatever frequency they choose and however they want to come in. Um, But there there is not a uh, an endless cycle of treatment that that has no aim. Uh, Any good treatment plan should have a beginning and an end. Um, The other misconceptions with the cracking. Do you always have to hear the cracking sound? I think I I covered that. But no, you don't. a sacral occipital technique is a just a fancy way of saying, yeah, we could work with your body without creating um, high force maneuvers on the body, pushing and, and twisting and turning, sort of like turning into the pretzel type mm-hmm. moves. Um, and there are a, a many others. One chiropractor to the next, you could probably see a hundred different ways of doing the similar thing. Um but misconceptions, I, I guess, uh, if I just sort of cross the bridge with as people bring them up to me, I, I try to cross the bridge. Mike, are there any that, that come to your mind? Um, none, none mostly. <clears throat> One question I have, like, you know, we talked about the, the back cracking. Um, like, is it the same thing happening in your back as is doing when, I'm, when I, like, say crack my knuckles? Absolutely. It's mm. a cavitation. That's just fancy word of saying that there is gas released within a joint. Um, and to make my point, it's not necessary uh, to create a, a better condition. However, it's a nice little sound that indicates that something did happen. A lot mm-hmm. of people say, well, I didn't hear it crack. Did anything happen? Well, yeah, well, something did happen. Uh, but specifically, the cracking sound is just a movement of gas within a joint. And if you notice, you might be able to crack your knuckle once, but then if you try it again, it won't make noise until it resets itself and then maybe five ten minutes later you could do it again Mm -hmm. but that's not the intended purpose of chiropractic to just create sound or or for that matter um, make noise 
I think, if I'm not mistaken, I've heard in the past uh, resistance versus, uh, you know, chiropractic against, uh, you know, uh, medical uh, mm-hmm. uh, diagnoses. Right. Like, safe if you, like, uh, for instance, a personal, uh, uh, you know, experience. My, we were in a car accident several years ago. And my wife has mm-hmm. had something that was not uh, uh, uh Really easily diagnosed. I guess they call it a soft tissue injury. Mm-hmm. That's apparently, that's yeah, apparently it puts a giant asterisk wild card on whatever could be wrong with you. And we're not going to figure out you're not getting surgery mm-hmm. and, uh, and insurance and Absolutely. the whole thing is a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you run into that a lot. Is this, is this a continuing issue? Is it, is it still seen in that kind of questionable light versus going to a doctor and getting that diagnosis? Uh, well, a, a diagnosis is a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. There, there is not a, uh, a, a list that I operate out of that's different from the medical profession. What I come up with in terms of a diagnosis after an examination or diagnostic testing should be the same as what you would find out of the appropriate medical doctor's office, be it a um, orthopedist, family doc. Um, and by all means, in my world, it's a sprain, a strain, musculoskeletal something with your muscle tendon ligament bone uh, that's primarily my world of diagnosing uh, you you won't get a diagnosis out of me for uh, an intestinal issue or cardiac issue even though i may suspect it that's not my scope of practice to go into that world mm-hmm. But regarding that soft tissue injury, sure. Uh, if that's what you heard in the medical profession, you may very well hear that out of my diagnostic list. But the way we would deal with it could be two very different paths. And maybe it all depends on, on what you were told to do. You might find that, wow, in a chiropractor's office, that same condition is treated a little bit differently but ideally, obviously, with the same intent to make you feel better. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's a case-by-case basis, but soft tissue injuries are that condition that has the asterisks. And, and it's a shame because pain uh, in soft tissue injuries is significant, but it's very hard to objectively prove. It means that you look good, the muscles feel right, but they hurt. And the question is why? And you're the only one that knows that they hurt because you're the one feeling it. And it's kind yeah. of like, I, I, sure. you know, I know I hurt. Why can't you prove why I hurt? And there's that, that exactly. bit of a back and forth going on there. Right. Uh, oh, that's a common day presentation. Uh, I do get a lot of the people that come in to say, well, and I, I, I guess I uh, have come to learn to take this as a positive, but I'll have people saying, well, you're my last resort. I've been everywhere and then mm-hmm. might as well try you. Well, thank you for coming in. And those are the fun people to work with because they have been down every avenue they can finding l- limited relief or no relief. And it gives me the opportunity to do something new and most of the time it works because outside of a symptom oriented approach if you're telling me only your neck hurts and that's where all treatment goes then we're missing the bigger picture because your body is connected your neck does connect on to other areas of your body which can if you treat the appropriate places result in a reduction of pain it, it it's a case by case basis as to how to deal with that but the but the chiropractor doesn't just say, well, if you hurt on, on the upper side of your neck, that's the only place I'll treat. I'm going to treat the whole spine. I'm going to look at your whole body. How do you stand? What's your posture like? Uh, what do you do all day? Do you sit, stand? Are you uh, physically active? There are so many different components and variables that can help in the healing process that the chiropractor may pay much more attention to than just the symptom-oriented approach by saying, well, you hurt in your neck, here is something to decrease pain. Here is a medication to decrease uh, inflammation. It certainly can be valid, but it's not addressing the bigger picture. And so the chiropractor, uh, in those cases, when I see that, it, it's I, I love it because it's like a puzzle. 
that piece by piece you begin to put the body together in a way that helps a person feel great. It's like you're playing, like you're playing operation. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Sometimes it's a it, it by knowing the anatomy you could begin what. I, what we'll call a kinetic chain. Mm -hmm. For example, when you walk, you know, which muscle moves first, second, third, and how does your ankle relate to your knee, to your hip, to your low back, so on and so forth. If you understand the muscle movements and how they interrelate, you can help things distant from where you feel the pain. So by working at the hip, you could help with the knee pain or vice versa. Uh, it, truly remarkable, and that's the puzzle that I enjoy. Um, and when I work with somebody who is motivated in learning themselves, all the better. Mm. And <clears throat> maybe that's a, a neat little twist in terms of the treatment in in, uh, in the chiropractic sense. It really is a give and take in terms of communication. What you experience, what you feel, what you're capable of doing. It, does guide me on how I work with you. Uh, if, if you're unwilling to do anything outside of a treatment session in terms of exercise, activity, posture change, it's a, it becomes a little bit more difficult on my side to create changes. But when you're on board saying, okay, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to start paying attention to the little things in life. Wow. Now we're working as a team. We could give and take what works, what doesn't work. Um, and if it were just a cookbook mentality of saying, oh, you got this problem, do this, oh, it would be too easy. But it's not. Everybody's different. So each plan and each little thing we do is individualized for what you feel. It's more than just a Band-Aid on the situation. Absolutely. In the ideal sense, it's really the correction of the problem. Uh, and be it an injury <clears throat> or some chronic uh, uh, event that sort of hangs out with you for the a long, for the long haul, and you just want to find a way to deal with it. So you're right. Um, you know, it, it, of course, here at <clears throat> Seclair in Z Harmony, we have a lot of uh, focus on, as we spoke before, I say the yoga, the Reiki, uh, hmm. alternatives to say the medication and the and the typical ways of. Uh, overcoming, uh, you know, mental issues or, mm -hmm. or, or other, you know, physical right. issues. This really seems like, especially the wholeness of somebody, you know, learning the body. It, it, this is like a kind of, can we think of this the same way as an alternative, you know, obviously to pain medication, but to, uh, say surgery in some cases? Uh, the, well, that's a tricky question. Um, chiropractic care in a collaborative sense with other, uh, healing professions, I would never want to look at it as the alternative. Rather, mm -hmm. it's the complement too. Because some things, something surgery is needed for. And, and that, that's my point. So, uh, if in in an acute condition um, regarding mental health, uh, severe depression, uh, it, uh, by all means, medicate the acute condition if it's vital to the person's health and well being. Mm -hmm. The chiropractic work can occur at the same time, but would never advocate for, uh, would never advise the person to remove themselves from a medication. So it never is, it's never throw your pills away, do this. Absolutely it's, not, because medicine has a purpose. It, it absolutely <clears throat> helps in acute scenarios. Mm -hmm. But it, over the duration, the long haul, the, the, I guess the philosophical question is, does that need to be maintained? But that's not my job to ever guide somebody off of medications uh, as I'm not allowed to do that. My mm -hmm. license doesn't yeah. allow me to advise you uh, what to do with your medication. So it's really a personal journey that as a patient, somebody needs to say, well, I'm interested in getting off of this. That discussion needs to ha happen with the prescribing doctor. Um, so my role then becomes to complement the work that that patient's doing, help them learn their body, talk with the prescribing doctor to say, well, should we do a trial of trying to pull off? And in doing so, maybe you can wean off. But uh, to be very clear with that, it is not about me saying, no, no pills, no, no surgery. Uh, it's just not what I operate under. I can't prescribe it or perform it. But if I could keep your body moving, teach you how to keep it moving, 
um, without those, then the, all the better from the very natural uh, context of what chiropractic is about. So if somebody wanted to uh, uh, find out more information, are there resources online? Uh, through Z Harmony or through the website at Seclair, mm-hmm. you could find out about me. You know, here at Seclair, uh, how yeah. you know you can find about you with, uh, through the website. Correct, and uh, should you want to make an appointment or speak with me, uh, the number should be listed at the seven two four five three nine one six three three. Feel free to call, ask questions. Um, uh, and you can meet with me here at Z Harmony. I'm here on Wednesdays, um, uh, so you're welcome to call and uh, ask away. Excellent. And for those that aren't, say, in the in the Westmoreland County area here here in uh, Western PA, of course we're all downloaded all over the place. <laughs> what, what, what's the best course of action? Do you think uh, to communicate with me uh, with you <clears throat> or finding somebody in your area? Uh, how to find somebody in their area? Mm-hmm. Um, you pick up the phone. If you're really starting at a, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got to talk and you got to ask questions. The mm-hmm. key point, in my opinion, is you want somebody who's going to look at you as a whole person. Uh, most chiropractors do. Uh, mm-hmm. That's sort of our job. We're holistic minded. Um, but ask the questions. How do you work with people? Um, how much time would I expect to spend with you? Uh, 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 you know, that's a big point of contention. How long? Do you actually have face-to-face contact uh, with me? It's pretty inclusive. Our first meetings are, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, um, really learning about you. But, you know, there are different models of practice. So I would advise people if they're uh, looking for a chiropractor, ask questions. Um, call up, make that initial consultation, and, and see what they could do. Well, again, thank you for joining us here. I think it was a great talk. And if anybody uh, uh, wants to learn more, of course, we shared the phone number and uh, everything at seclair.com. Uh, you know, we'll see, you know, if a lot of people have questions, we'll see about maybe bringing it back for a Q&A. Absolutely. Glad to be here today. Excellent. You can email me uh, at mike at seclair.com. I'll pass along anything uh, uh, in your field, of course. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And of course, we're on the we're on Facebook, so look up Seclair there. Feel free to ask questions about anything we do here, and uh, you know we'll, we'll forward along to the staff, or the staff, or, or a lot of them are on Facebook. They'll maybe answer you straight on there. Um, and uh, and of course, thank you for joining us on uh, on the Seclair Chatterbox. Um, please continue the conversation. Like I said, on the blog, on the Facebook at seclair.com slash blog. Uh, you can leave comments right here in this uh, the, this post on that blog if you'd like. Uh, until next time, we'll see you in the chatterbox.